Welcome to Tunis. Uh, welcome to the France 24 interview. We are at the Palace in Carthage, where we are welcomed by the President of the Republic, Monsef Marzouki. Hello. Thank you for welcoming us here in your palace. First of all, a topical question. Even though we don't have a lot of uh, news on the situation, French forces have intervened in Mali to oust uh, the Islamists. Uh, I'd like to know whether you support this French initiative. Listen, the situation in Mali is a source of concern to us because we are now um, aware that our own jihadists uh, are in uh, close contact with those uh, terrorist uh, outfits. And we also have this feeling that Tunisia is turning into a corridor between uh, Libyan armaments and uh, those regions, and we're scrutinizing uh, this uh, hornet's nest because it is a genuine hornet's nest that could threaten uh, the safety of all those countries, including Tunisia. We're scrutinizing the situation right now. And do you support France in its initiative? For the time being, I uh, th think the situation is so intricated. Of course, uh, we would rather have had a political, a negotiated political situation or solution, and that's the reason why we're scrutinizing the situation with great concern. Mr. President, Mr. President, uh, you will be uh, celebrating on the 14th of January two years of freedom uh, since uh, Ben Ali was ousted uh, by the street on the 14th of January. January, there will be celebrations here in Tunis. François Hollande will not be coming as long as there hasn't been an election. Do you consider that this is a sign of mistrust towards uh, Tunisian power? Well, let me tell you that this has uh, been Ali's office. This has been Ali's uh, former office, which we turned into a waiting room. And uh, uh, I had hoped uh, uh, Monsieur Hollande would have come over to Tunisia, but apparently if this is uh, postponed till next year, we'll uh, just note it down. Are you disappointed? Yes, I am. I thought that, okay, we're trying to encourage uh, the process, and uh, the uh, process is now uh, in the right direction, and we're uh, working flat out on it, and Tunisia is... Uh, once again, uh, heading in the right direction, despite uh, what everybody might say about it. And uh, that's, the, that's it. Tunisia is on the right track, but we were expecting the presentation of the Constitution uh, at our uh, last uh, interview for France 24. You said you were hoping that it would be presented on the 14th of January. Let's be aware of what actually happened. What did we do? We actually carried out two extraordinary things. The first one is a mental revolution. And uh, today, Tunisians uh, feel their citizens. They no longer fear power, nor do they fear the police forces. And today, Tunisians are no longer subjects and have turned into fully-fledged uh, citizens. Uh, there still are citizens who are afraid, Mr. President. Wait a minute. Okay, you got an extraordinary mental revolution. And uh, all those today that are detaining power know that they're responsible and accountable for the situation. And they know that they can still come in for criticism. So we had, we underwent this uh, revolution revolution uh, in the hearts and spirits. And then we had a political uh, revolution. Uh, Tunisians may uh, benefit from uh, the freedom to uh, uh, create organizations, and they've had elections uh, for the very first time in history. Now, all those uh, different things are being organized, and today we are now undergoing an extremely integrated and complex uh, process in a very dangerous uh, environment. And today, if we're uh, uh, actually uh, lagging behind, uh, I mean, it's in months, not in years, and uh, uh, of course, uh, we're, uh, this is too bad. We are actually lagging behind, but we've been talking about it uh, morning till evening, and we're now waiting for a uh, unique consensus. Look at what is going on elsewhere. Now, the antagonist forces today are not talking with one another, and I'm doing everything I can to really ha uh, reconcile uh, themselves with one another. Tunisia is actually pressing ahead. But a year ago, Mr. President, uh, you uh, constituted an alliance with the Anartha Party, and as the months went by, you've become more and more critical of your allies. People that today say in Tunis that you're probably uh, the strongest opponent in the Troika. Do you regret this alliance, which is against nature? Listen, Tunisia is a complex uh, country, and part of the population is uh, conservative, and uh, they vote for Islamists, and another part is a modernist and uh, westernized uh, part of the population, which I'm part of. Now, the question is, what are we going to do with that two, uh, uh, those two different groups? Either they're pitted uh, one against the other, they're with a cold or a hot-butted civil war, 
and uh, or well everyone is actually uh, taking over so is to uh, uh, really crack down on the other part of uh, Tunisia and uh, we experienced 50 years of uh, political turmoil the second solution was mine we need to uh, really turn this complex country into a unique reality and we need to really have people talk with one another and find the right, right ways to live with one another uh, under the auspices of law and this is what we've been striving to do we're trying to avoid uh, permanent conflict between uh, the Islamists and uh, the secular uh, uh, part of the country and I really started working with friends and say okay we need to really come up with a new uh, model and a new way of uh, exerting powers so as to avoid civil wars no regret about it whether well it may be complex okay what else is new in all governments uh, this is the situation and uh, in coalition in, uh, governments even more so but I'm uh, I have no regrets about it this uh, country should uh, be based on agreement consensus and uh, should not uh, uh, be subject to civil you wars. You are a man of the left. You're a lay politician. You say yourself you're a human rights activist. There are trials going on today against uh, journalists, uh, against uh, academics, uh, journalists. Uh, Ulfa Riahi has come up with a story of alleged uh, corruption against uh, the Tunisian Minister of Foreign Affairs. She is banned for from traveling. This is a democracy. I uh, think of the academic, the director of uh, Manuba, who is prosecuted because he doesn't want the niqab to enter his university. He is accused of slapping a young student uh, wearing the niqab. We haven't heard you on these things. Ofa Rihai, banned from traveling. Do you condemn that? I'm not trying to dodge the question. I'm going to uh, answer the question. But uh, 286 festivals took place in uh, Tunisia with uh, free expression, whether artistic uh, free expression. We talked about all of those six festivals that uh, were disturbed by Salafist uh, groups. Today, uh, hundreds of uh, journalists are severely criticizing the government, including myself, and nobody's in jail, and nobody's being prosecuted, and nobody talks about those cases. Today, the government is no longer able to be vocal and unbridled press is uh, really being very happy to criticize governments with a zero uh, news ban newspapers, zero television networks. Let's uh, put things back in context. But you, the human rights activist... Okay, uh, trees should not hide uh, the forest. Now the forest, what is it? Uh, hundreds of journalists are severely criticizing the governments, are uh, throwing, unfairly and aggressively, uh, throwing politicians in the mud. However, I kept saying... Uh, uh, now, we should actually face up to those perverted effects of uh, democracy rather than go back to the past. And those phenomena you're talking about are actually placed back in context. Those are exceptions, not rules. And let me tell you. Do you condemn this, al banned from traveling? Do you condemn Absolutely. it? Absolutely. And I do not understand. I mean, we got about uh, three, million, uh, uh, 3 million cases in the courts. Why is this woman subject to a travel ban? My point of view is very clear. Uh, now, this is... Uh, uh, abuse. Now, the only exception is uh, this. Uh, 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 well, the president cannot just uh, grab the phone and say, change this, this, and that. No, no. Uh, I use uh, indirect ways, and uh, sometimes I'm clear. I say, I don't agree with this. And I often said that, systematically said, here, in this place, I uh, hosted that woman that was raped by three uh, cops, three uh, thugs, and I told her, okay, I'm ap I apologize on behalf of the state, and I had uh, those uh, cops prosecuted. I'm really true to myself. I still do not want people to uh, tell everything everything they want and magnify things. Just using a few examples, Tunisia is being torn away by this, this and that, and Tunisia is actually being, uh, be, becoming a Taliban country. No, this is a fairy tale. Mr. President, there are women who are worried. Uh, women in your camp, progressive women, I've met some of them in Tunis. Some of them say that they can not go to a public beaches uh, in a two-piece bathing suit. They have to go to private beaches. Others say that they wear the veil when they leave the office because when they go through uh, the uh, neighborhoods, they're afraid. What do you say to these women? You are very wrong. You should not be concerned. Have no fear. Don't think that those people that are intimidating you can do anything about it. They're not going to change anything. I am a custodian for your way of life. There are two different Tunisias today. Tunisia, um, afraid of its uh, uh, life, uh, the poorer part of Tunisia, and another part of Tunisia, the wealthy, westernized Tunisia. Now, my work is to say to each and every one, you are wrong. Do not fear. Have no fear. We are going to fight against poverty and really make sure that Tunisians 
have enough work. And the other part of uh, Tunisia, I say that to that other part of Tunisia, okay, we are not going to have uh, or, or do anything or change a women's uh, way of life. I'm uh, working with hundreds of people and I'm custodian for those ways of life. Now, there are tangible threats, but in all the countries of uh, in the world, you have crackpots. So you got a, a fundamentalist. Can those people change uh, our society? Do they have any sway over the state? Do they have an, inv in an influence over this tectonic plate? Because Tunisia is a tectonic plate heading in a very specific uh, direction because of its structure and education. Now, you got some fundamentalists, uh, and uh, this tectonic plate is not going to change. Uh, and I'm telling those women of the country, don't be concerned and face up to those people. If those people are trying to intimidate you, I'm going to be with you, and we're going to be cracking down on them because this uh, way of life was chosen by the uh, overwhelming majority of Tunisians and will not change. Uh, there is information circulating in Tunis, according to which a couple of lovers uh, uh, has been uh, sentenced to two months in prison for having kissed in public. Listen, I'm not informed. I'm not really uh, aware of all those fairy tales. But once again, let me tell you, in this country, you got a legal system, you got laws, and this uh, legal system should uh, be able to play its fully fledged role. I cannot really work or, or thin myself out. No, uh, we have been experiencing uh, freedom in this country, uh, 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 great freedom in uh, the past year, and I support this because this is the greatest uh, uh, benefit of the revolution, and we're not going to call this back in question. Mr. President, uh, the revolution began not in Tunis, but in the underprivileged regions of Tunisia, in Sidi Bouzid. There are still almost daily demonstrations in these underprivileged regions. People have no jobs in Sidi Bouzid and elsewhere. Employment has decreased, in particular in Sidi Bouzid. Uh, you were not well received in Sidi Bouzid uh, in October. Are you fearing a counter-revolution today in Tunisia? No. You got uh, rightful uh, frustrations, and you also have the rest, the legitimate or uh, wrongful uh, frustrations. You have uh, rightful uh, frustrations because we're not working fast enough because we're lagging behind with political debates. They have concealed the urgency of social and economic uh, changes and modifications. That is what is hard for the Tunisians. When I talk to them, they say in Tunis they are talking about the constitution, there are tensions between the political parties, and we want jobs. They have a feeling that people are not taking care of them today. No, no, this is absolutely wrong. Those uh, uh, are not uh, uh, void discussions. I mean, the state has to be uh, benefiting from uh, strong foundations. Now, we reached uh, the Sidi Bouzid situation. Why? Because the political system was uh, rotten to the core. Now, this system uh, was uh, marked by oppression and uh, freedoms were not uh, complied with and so on and so forth. Today, we cannot just uh, implement social and economic developments without the setting up of the foundations. And this is what we're doing right now. So actually, we're not wasting time. We're actually setting up the right uh, fundamentals so as to support a uh, sturdy state for social and economic developments. Number two, I keep telling people, now let's, now, you, okay, you got to, you imagine a switch. All you got to do is uh, press the switch and uh, we're going to be, uh, uh, actually reaching enlightenment, uh, no, or create light. Now, you can imagine either we're not able to, uh, either we don't know where the switch is located, or we do not want to press the switch. No, but there is no switch when you think about it. There is no magic wand. Uh, we are creating the switch and creating the whole electrical system and creating the lamp so as to create light, and this takes time. This is time-consuming. Now, even I did not know that. Now, when you set up an economic uh, project. I'm going to uh, set up a plant uh, here, for example. Uh, between the time you make the decision and when the people start working at the plant, you need three to five years in all the countries in the world. And uh, this is time consuming. I keep telling people now you can actually criticize us for not working fast enough. And I, ca I sympathize. And I've, I'm also frustrated. And I'm also telling the government, OK, let's actually finish everything up with the Constitution. We need a, a government and so on and so forth so to really uh, make things snappy. Um, but uh, no, people tell me, uh, give me a job. No, I cannot do this. Nobody can. Very last question, Mr. President. What can we wish to you for 2013? Good luck. Good luck, because we need it. Uh, good luck and um, elections. We don't have a date for elections. I don't want to give any dates because this is uh, actually becoming ridiculous. I would like to have those elections uh, before the summer, uh, the soonest, and uh, at the end of October, the latest. And this is a realistic timeline. Thank you, Mr. President, and good luck for 2013. Thank you for welcoming us. Uh, have a nice day. See you soon.